Hello, hello, and welcome to a video on the Structures and Forces Unit. This is video five. And we're going to take a look at the external forces acting on a structure and how those external forces affect the structure overall. The learning outcomes covered today for the Grade 7 Science, sec, uh, specific learner outcome 2.1, recognize and use units of force and mass, and identify and measure forces and loads. Analyze, a design, and identify properties of materials that are important to individual parts of the structure, and infer how the stability of a model structure will affect, will be affected by changes in the distribution of mass within the structure and by changes in the design of its foundation. So today's structure is this one. Uh, it looks like it's above the clouds in this photo, actually, but it's an amazing piece of architecture as the other ones have been. Let's take a look at where it is in relation to us. It is located in Europe. It's actually in France. And it is just outside of a town called Malau. Uh, this bridge was built to bypass heavy traffic that was going through the town. And this bridge is spectacular. It spans a huge distance and is amazing. Let's see if we can actually go down to street view here so you can get a better view of what it might look like. So let's go all the way down. Take a look back up towards the bridge. There it is. The Malau Suspension Bridge. Awesome. Now, this bridge is unique. It is the tallest bridge in the world with one mast reaching 343 meters or 1,125 feet. Now, construction cost approximately 400 million euros, and it was completed in 2004. It's made up of an eight-span steel roadway supported by seven concrete pylons. It is two and a half kilometers long. Now, why is this bridge special? Well, the entire length of the bridge itself was slid out into the valley across the pylons from both sides. Now, this was achieved using hydraulic rams, and these rams move the deck about six centimeters every four minutes over the course of many days. While the kilometers of the roadway were being slid out through the space, it was supported by both the final pylons and the temporary pylons. So the ones that would be there forever and the ones that were put there temporarily. When the roadway was completely slid out onto its final position, the mass at the top were put into place. This is them sliding the bridge out. So from either end, they push the bridge onto each pylon until it's set and then it connects in the middle. That's amazing. They built the bridge roadway before uh, they slid it out. Now, when you're looking at towers, what kinds of questions or problems might an engineer have when constructing that tower? Malau Bridge had a span problem. They couldn't just hoist the, the bridge up. It was too high. They had to push it from the edges to the middle. So what sorts of problems might you envision in this structure? How about this one? Another suspension bridge in England. Now, when we look at structures, we need to take a look at the different uh, loads or the weights that are put on it. Now, different structures have different purposes, as we've mentioned, and engineers must determine what types of load need to be supported and the weight that the structure must hold. Okay, so load. Load is the external force on a structure. A book sitting on a bookshelf is considered an example of a load. Weight is the heaviness of that book and the material being supported by the structure. Now mass is thrown in there too. Mass is the amount of matter in a substance. So how do we remember this? Well, if you think of traveling to Jupiter, when you travel to Jupiter, your mass doesn't change, but your weight does because there's greater gravity pulling down on you. Okay, so weight is kind of how heavy you are and mass is how much stuff you're made of. Now, gravity has an effect on every structure. If you hold your arms out for straight, hold your arms out straight for a few minutes, you can tell that gravity has an effect acting on both your arms. And we know that gravity has this effect because over time, your arms become sore and fatigued because gravity is constantly pulling down on them. Now, scientists have discovered that even, through, even though gravity acts on all parts of a structure, there is a point 
where we can think of the downward force of gravity acting on that structure. So there's a single point where gravity pulls on a structure, or in this case, a flamingo. Now, the imaginary point where gravity acts on the structure is known as the center of gravity. When a structure is supported at its center of gravity, it stays balanced. In order for an object to be able to balance itself within the center of gravity, there must be equal mass around that center. Take a look at that picture. The center of gravity is not on the top of his head, but more in the structure, leaning over to more away from him because it's balanced on both the front and the back of that structure. In architecture, that balance comes in forms of symmetry within the object. Now, you can see in the picture on the left of the Empire State Building, there's clear symmetry straight down the middle from the top of the spire all the way down. It's symmetrical on either sides. Same with the Eiffel Tower seen there, straight down the middle, same on both sides. So symmetry is a balanced arrangement of mass on opposite sides of a line around a central point. Notice how I said mass, because that's the amount of matter on either sides of the line. So take a look at this bay of windows. We have several points of symmetry here. We have each window being symmetrical. We have each column between the windows being symmetrical. And even the um, uh, stone on the left there is symmetrical in all different ways that it's been divided by those red lines. Taipei 101 on the left, uh, symmetrical down the center between the bridge. The Taj Mahal is symmetrical. The Luxor Hotel and Casino, when you're standing out front, looks very symmetrical. And the U.S. Capitol building is seen to be very symmetrical from this distance. So all structures have to support a load. Now whether that load is moving or non-moving will affect the design and the function of that structure. And we call static or non-moving loads uh, dead loads. These forces stay the same for long periods of time. The weight of the actual structure is considered to be a dead load. Now a dynamic load is an external force that moves or changes very quickly. Uh, students on a staircase represent a living or dynamic load. Okay, so those are the types of external forces that act within, that act on structures. Make sure that you review that a couple of times and get to know those structures as best you can. We'll talk to you later.